quick walk down the street, and sure enough, there it is, poison ivy. Leaves of three, let it be, we've always heard. Well, that's true for the most part, but there are other plants that have three leaves that aren't poison ivy. And for instance, there's one that I can think of, and it has to do with raspberries. Blackberries and raspberries, they have three leaves as well, but they're not poison. Box elder is another one. And you see the waxy leaves? That's what you have to look out for. That's the problem. And you also see there's a couple Virginia creeper mixed in. And so many people confuse Virginia creeper for poison ivy. And that's not the case. It's harmless and it won't leave a rash. Sumac, on the other hand, that will leave a rash and a lot more. And unfortunately, poison ivy loves to grow within other plants. It'll actually take over. It is an evasive plant, and you have to watch out for it. And another way to identify poison ivy is those little bumps that protrude off of the leaves. That's another telltale sign. Oh my goodness, you gotta watch out for that. I grew up pretty much in the woods as a child. Most of the children on my block, we had woods right down the street and every day after school we'd be out in the woods we'd be playing around poison ivy our entire lives and it was nothing to see half of the neighborhood walking around with calamine lotion a nice pink hue on your legs and you knew exactly who had it and who didn't and it was probably the only method to soothe the itching of poison ivy a lot of people back then really didn't understand how poison ivy actually worked. And it wasn't until years later that I figured it out on my own. Now there's definitely a method to getting rid of poison ivy. And it's not as bad as you think. But it does take a little bit of practice. <laughs> and you'll never get it again. See the berries? Those things are ominous. And that's how they spread. They get birds to eat them and they sort of evacuate their body in the form of bird poop. <laughs> and that's how they get planted in your backyard and in your garden and any other place people are at. Those seeds, they grow so quickly and you won't even know they're there until after they pop out of the ground and next thing you know, you've got a rash and you're wondering why. Well, this is exactly why, because the poison ivy it looks like a lot of other plants when it's starting out. It turns red when it first comes out, and then it turns green, and then it turns red again, and then dies off for the winter. And there's f some folks out there that'll tell you that the vines are hairy. They look like rope. That's not always the case. And here's a case in point. This is clearly poison ivy, and you see it has smooth bark on the vines. And that'll throw you. You'll think, no, nah, that's not a hairy vine. Only part that's hairy on this is where it anchors to the tree. And this street has a lot of traffic on it. A lot of kids walk past going to their school bus and their parents probably never even gave it a second thought. But yeah, here it is. And one of the biggest problems with poison ivy is you can actually get it from the vines as well. You don't have to make contact with the leaves themselves. You can get it actually just by touching the vine. It is a defense mechanism, sort of like the onion. You know, when you cut an onion, it sprays that stuff in the air and it goes up your nose and it makes your eyes water and cry. Well, that's a defense the plant has come up with over years and years. Well, poison ivy has a special thing. Eurytiol, as I mentioned before, and that is the element that causes so much problem with the human body. Some people can touch it and not have a problem. Others, they just brush next to it. Next thing you know, they have a rash all up and down their body. And poison ivy being invasive goes into your garden. It goes up the side of your house and blends in with other plants and vines. And it also likes hanging out with the Virginia creeper, which is harmless. 
And here you can see some green briar, which is next to. And this is growing up the side of a cedar tree. And like I said, this is in a neighborhood. So there's children walking by. And that's something that you want to look out for. Be very careful and have a mindful eye about where poison ivy is. And here's a perfect shot of sumac. And it's usually in swampy areas. So you don't have to worry about it being in dry areas, but mostly swampy areas. Be aware. And do not, under any circumstance, burn poison oak, sumac, or poison ivy in any fire. Because it's going to vaporize the ritual. And if it goes in your lungs, you could actually have poison ivy in your lungs and that smoke is very hazardous and you don't want that inside. Also, there's a wives tale that people tell you if you ingest poison ivy, it will help cure it and you won't be allergic to it anymore. Do not believe that. That is BS and that can actually cause you uh, future health problems down the road. And if you have uh, ulcer or something, it could exacerbate that problem and it could put you in the hospital. So when you hear somebody say, ingest a little piece of it, eat it, do not do that under any circumstance. It's crazy. And I don't know why people think that that is a cure. If anything, go to an allergist and do it the proper way where they inject it in your arm. Um, but it's a lesser dose. Those flyers that you see around parks that help you identify what poison ivy is, and it does show you quite a bit. Here's an even better one that shows you poison sumac 
which poison sumac is worse than poison oak and ivy put together. You gotta watch out for it. And here is the rash. This is some poor person that came in contact with poison ivy or poison sumac or poison oak. And there's calamine lotion. And that's one of the only ways to uh, alleviate the scratching. And here's some other stuff over the counter. And Xanfel is the only cure that I know of that will actually get rid of poison ivy. <laughs>